Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of DadCast. I'm JP, that guy is Nick. Nick, how are you, brother? Dude, I'm so good. Are you? I, I feel good for you, too. Oh, man. To last, My Niners won. They did. What? Now, depending on when this episode is actually going to air, it's probably going to be a little bit later down the line from the day that it has been recorded. But for all that are watching this, last night was the last episode regular season game of the 21 NFL season. Uh, Nick is a Niner fan. I'm a Raider fan. We both got in. There was high drama. We'll discuss that later. It is not important. What is important right now is the man, the myth, the legend who is joining us today on DadCast. Welcome. Uh, I, I want to say country music artist. They call him the Weird Al Yankovic of country <laughs> music. Uh, he's a great guy. He's awesome. He is Cletus T. Judd. Welcome to DadCast, man. How are you? Yeah, hey, guys. Y'all very, hey, buddy, thank you for having me. It's always uh, been a pleasure to be compared to a guy with a name weird in his name. So that's, uh, yeah, that's and I've been with me for a long time. And I'm willing to bet that wasn't the first time you've heard it, nor will it be the last. And it, it's, it's a compliment, too. You know, Lord, I remember back in 19, I think it was 1982, I heard Weird Al do um, I Lost on Jeopardy. Right. If you remember. I do. And that makes I'm you so old. <laughs> And uh, just uh, was a big fan of Weird Al the entire time. I actually tried to get him to do a duet with me several, several years ago. And uh, his manager, Jay Levy, said, look, he turned down Dean Martin. He dang sure ain't going to do it with you. So, <laughs> it, wow. Are you are you are you on TikTok, Cletus? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, there's yeah. a new thing that you can duet there, and it's not as much, you know, commitment <laughs> from other artists. So, you know, maybe, maybe we can work it out that way. Yeah, All right. I, I'm, Give that a try. I love TikTok too. I've only been on it about a year, but it's probably my favorite uh, social media forum. I love it. I like it a lot. Yeah, me too. I, I was supposed to, you know, be in bed by around eleven last night, and you know, next thing I know, it's one thirty a.m. And look at this, swiping it, swiping it, swiping it. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm not. Let's. I'm not doing anymore so i can stay up late <laughs> well there you go all right the very very first question the rite of passage cletus and i know you know what's coming uh because we've spoken we know that you've uh, watched the show before but here we go we already know the answer the viewers probably know the answer but the few that are listening and watching that may not here it is cletus t judd are you a dad absolutely 100 percent. i'm all dad 100 percent. i'm i'm all in i suck at it according to my kids but <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> That's kind of according to all of our kids. They all say yeah. we suck. Yeah. It, it used to be cool, you know, when I when I when they were younger, they really enjoyed hanging out with me, and especially my you know I have stepkids now, but my daughter, uh, she loved hanging out with me. But a couple of years ago, she said, "Look, Dad, we're we're kind of sick and tired of those old videos. Why don't you go do something else and get out of the house?" So, right. Uh, that was that was their way of saying. We're done with you. Unless we need gas money, get out of here. <laughs> How uh, old is uh, your daughter? Uh, my Caitlin is seventeen. My stepdaughter Isabella is seventeen, and my stepson Jeremiah is fifteen. So. All right, so you are literally thick in the middle of the chaos, as we like to call it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope we can say this on a podcast, but my both my daughters started their period on the same days. Get you some of that. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, what the odds of that happening? It, it, that's the devil punishing me right there. I want to make something up to just, you know, try to compare with that, but I'm not even going to bother. Hey, I'll, I'll give you one. My daughter and my wife are on the same cycle. It's a freaking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I think this may be the first time in the history of the DadCast podcast that we have started talking about the ladies' menstrual cycles. Wow. I, I apologize in advance. You no, know, that's all right. You know, it's <laughs> some... That. That, that feel for me, I can tell you. At some point, we got to cover everything. You know, we got to run That's the gamut it. here. So exactly. it might as well be today. Well, that is right, awesome. Sir, so how do you, how do you deal with it? Do you have like a separate house you get to go live in? Because I would love I, one. I just stay in the car. I just stay in the car <laughs> a week at a time. Yeah, I just pull out of the garage and cut the radio on and and sleep in the front seat because it's like entering. Uh, demonic world during that that one particular week and, and you know they're, they're they're not biological either so what was the odds of that happening you right know, <laughs> both they start the same time and uh one handles it better than the other i'll just and i'm not going to say no names but uh <laughs> a little better than the other one 
That's oh, man. <laughs> good stuff, man. So I, it, it's funny. You say you go to the car, and I know there's some truth to that. I know because I've applied it myself. Now, uh, I recently bought a Tesla, Cletus. So oh. <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, I, I know. But I found out there's some extra bonus added things that I really wasn't taking into account when I bought the car, which is a gigantic screen that plays movies and surround sound. So when yeah, I escape I to my car, I'm watching Mandalorian, Star Wars comes up, you know, whatever you want to watch an episode of Friends, I'm in. I have been missing for real weeks at a time in my car. I'm not smart enough to own a Tesla, I'll tell you. <laughs> Ain't no way. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't think I was either. But you know what? It's 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 fairly easy once it's just like riding a bike, man. Once you figure it out, pff, smooth sailing. There you go, <laughs> Nick. Yo, man, it's a crazy weekend we've had, huh? Oh my gosh, yeah. Hey, so we found out we met a mutual friend of yours. You may not remember him. Um, he played guitar for you for a while. His name is C.J. Wilder. He's out of Nashville. Yeah, I know who that is. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. He's all, man, I don't think he's going to remember me, but bring me up. I'm like, all right, I will. Long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a playing with Marty Ray Project now. So we've actually had Marty out for the last, what, five days, four days? Yeah, he's still here. Yeah, so it's, oh, a, yeah, it's been crazy. Man, man that's awesome. Well, uh, tell CJ I said hello. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, do all of your, uh, your girls, uh, are you also living in the same household? Is there separate parenting with the stepchildren? Well, you know, I I moved here uh, about 10 years ago. I was doing radio down in, in Florida, and uh, I was making the drive back at Julie when we uh, when we got divorced, and I went to Florida. Julie, Julie came here. They were from here. Julie grew up in Ashland, Kentucky, and I was in Tampa doing radio, and it was it was probably the hardest seven years of my entire life, no question. Um, I was uh, traveling, commuting back and forth in my contract. I would work three weeks. I would come home a week, work three weeks, come here a week. And, man, you, you're talking about, uh, and I'm sure a lot of dads out there that, that can relate, you talking about misery, buddy. I, I lived it. It was, uh, you know, some of the most painful times that I had ever spent uh, in my adult life. You know, um, you, you, I always said you drive like hell to get to go see them and you go through hell when you drop them off, you know, and it's uh, it, it was tough. There was times that I had uh, dropped her off one time in lieu of Lexington and uh, the, the pain was just so unbearable, you know, of letting her letting her go. And her that's when she was, of course, littler and uh, hanging on to my neck. And, oh, you know, I pull over on the side of the road and throw up and and uh, I knocked my car glass out with my fist one time and. Uh, it, it was, it, it was pretty painful and I don't mean to go around the subject of what you asked, but, uh, that's, that's kind of how I, I got here to be a dad full time, you know, uh, uh, being in Tampa, I was there about two years, I think. And my boss walked in one morning, one afternoon after I got off the air and he said, Hey, take this home, take a look at it, read it and see what you think, you know, and I, I didn't think anything about it. And I went and played golf that afternoon and got home and I opened up that envelope and it was a contract for five years for two million dollars and i screamed and yelled and called all my buddies in georgia and said man fly down you know because uh, uh, i mean that's a that's a lot of money you know for anybody and and i had made money in my past but to actually see that on paper you know that for the way that i talk and my actions and my satire is worth that kind of money to a, a company you know and and we partied like rock stars that whole weekend. And then that Sunday evening, everybody left. And then I was sitting there in a big three, 4,000 square foot house with nothing and except pictures. And I would walk by Caitlin's room, you know, and, and then I was sitting on the sofa that night around two in the morning. I was looking at all these pictures on the mantle of her and I was counting on my fingers. I said, OK, let's say five years. So I'll miss first grade. I'm going to miss second grade third grade, fourth, but I might can make it home by halfway through the fifth grade. And I started thinking of all these things that I was going to miss, you know, and, and I would lay in bed at night and I'd say, God, look, I got, I got all kind of money in the bank. And what if I, what if I just went and gave that to the homeless shelter down here on in St. Pete? Could I get back that daddy daughter dance? I'm going to miss 
next weekend? Or what if I gave away every month, all the money I had that I've ever made and saved up? Is there any way I could buy back missing walking her into class for the first the first day of school? And all the answers were no, because, you know, I learned down there that, you know, you can't buy back. You can't buy them back. You can't buy memories. You know, uh, it's Im- impossible. And uh, I just woke up that uh, the next morning. I wrote on that envelope, you're worth more than what's on the inside of this. And I sealed it, put a piece of uh, scotch tape on it. And I, I told him I wasn't taking the job. I was coming home. And uh, that eventually led me to to get to where I am now to be able to see my kid every day. No boy. And don't re- my, my daughter saw that envelope uh, about a year ago in my in her hope chest. And uh, she said, damn, dad, we could work something out. Two million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got me driving a Chrysler 200 and I could have been in that Tesla. Yeah. Right, exactly. But you know, it, it, it's something to be said. At the time, it was the choice, and it was the right choice. I, I, I think, oh, and and 100%. and I, I'm blessed to. It's funny. We 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 have similar similar paths. I, I work in radio as well. I, I have for the past 20 years here in Southern Oregon. But I was fortunate to where obviously I'm close uh, to my children. Uh, I'm with the mom still, and they are all living under the same roof. So I didn't have to even think or juggle that. Now. Granted, there was never a two million dollar paycheck or a contract that was anywhere close to that because we are a you know it's a small market. But I still work in radio, thinking about sure. getting that. And while you're telling me that story on what would I would do if put in that same situation, it's of course I want to say, I, you know, I know I want to be with my children, but you know, until confronted with that, that I I can't say that I would or wouldn't. Yeah. I just I, I would assume that I would make the right choice. I, I, I lived with that a lot, you know, um, uh, I, I left there, went to Atlanta, you know, with clear channel at the time. And, and that's where I, I grew up and I was from, and at least that was, you know, 400 miles closer, but it still wasn't close enough. Uh, and so I eventually dropped it all and was fortunate enough to get, get a gig here with iHeart now, of course, uh, and it, it's really weird. You're, you're going to laugh at this. Both of you laugh at this. But when I moved here in 2012, I bought a house about three blocks from her. Uh, her and her mom, who I get along with great, you know. Um, and the damnedest thing is it should, she could ride her bike to my house, you know. And she was eight, nine years old at the time or whatever. But even when she left, even when she jumped on her bike and drove back down the sidewalk, unbearable yeah unbearable to this day to this day i'm 57 years old my daughter is 17 and to this day i don't know if it's ptsd i don't know if it's just you know i've never had the luxury of lot most fathers that got to live with their kid full time but it's still unbearable she can come over here and spend the night have a great time, you know, or we get in an argument or whatever, like all dads and daughters do or kids do get up the next morning and leave. And it's, it's all I can do to pull myself out of the bed. I, I still struggle with it. And now she's getting ready to go to college. Yeah. You know, that and, was like, what are you going to do and, then, and, man? That's, uh, it's, that's the gun in the mouth. That's <laughs> no, just kid. But that's, uh, <laughs> that's, I, 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 I don't handle that part of it. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 I struggle on, on that end of it. And I, I didn't have very good upraise and I really didn't ever have a, have a dad around very much abused as a child, you know, uh, to some degree. And so maybe I, you know, I, I, I've been looking for that book in the library, you know, on the parenting, but I've yet to, I've yet to find one, but that part of it, I do struggle with to this day. Yeah. Sure. It doesn't exist. It's just, you got to take it as it yeah. comes and, you know, I can't imagine. I know it's coming for me too. I have a 17 year old stepdaughter. She'll be a senior yeah. next year. And, right. uh, she splits time from here and her dad, her dad's a great guy. He's a good dad, good parent. Um, yeah. And I know it's coming. It, it's at least I think what we know what the way she's going, she might end up living with us till she's 25 to be perfectly honest. But <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, I know the, the options are, it, it's going to happen. And, I'm not looking forward to that day either, man, at, at all. Yeah. Thankfully, I still got two youngins. I got an 11 year old son and an eight year old baby girl that I still get. That's going to ease the pain. But I think when that eight year old 
You know, she just, she, as of right now, she's, I ask her, what are you going to do? Are you going to go to college? Are you going to leave daddy? She's like, no, dad, I'm going to live with you forever. You know? See, my, my, <laughs> mine said that too. And now none of them, they can't wait to get the hell out. Right, exactly. It's the cute and, words and I, of an eight year old. You know, and, and, and I get it. You know, I, 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 I tell you what I've handled better than I thought I would. And I don't know about the other dads out there, you know, and I think Caitlin appreciates it. And Isabella does too. Um, I've handled the boy thing better, I think, than than I thought I would. Now, maybe it's because she, you know, she does, she has a boyfriend now, and but he's a, a really good guy, you know. Right. Uh, and I, I think Caitlin was always worried that I wouldn't, you know. Now, listen, don't get me wrong; I could freak out at any minute, you know. Uh, but 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 I have handled because it's inevitable. And I always said if my daughter did the same thing that I did when I was in high school. I think I would be okay with it because when I went to school, you know, I'm probably much older than y'all are, you know, it was a more innocent time then, you know, there was no social media. There was, you know, I never saw drugs in high school. I was an athlete, played college basketball, you know, Um, but unfortunately society and times are different now. And, uh, you know, I, I have to, I have to give her space, you know, when it's, it's very difficult. It, 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 uh, I, I, like I said, I can't, I don't think I can be any more honest with you than I'm being that, that part of it. I, I probably smother to some degree, uh, probably text too much, probably call too. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but it's, I guess it's because I've just never, never had her enough. If that makes any sense at oh, all, you know, makes perfect sense, man. I understand completely. And you know, and if I go off the history of other guests we've had and, you know, friends and people and, and just, you know, seeing life and other ones, everyone's life's adventures, if you want, that's what you want to call it. Yeah. I think 17 to, you know, 21, 22, uh, there's going to be a little bit of disconnect, but right around that 23, 24 year old mark is when they start gravitating back to their parents. I know you've seen the meme, you know, zero to five. I want my daddy oh, five to 10. They love my dad. And you know what I mean? It's, it's going to circle back around. And those, yeah. I mean, those are going to be as precious as they were from the times when you bring them up I when they're little. That's a hundred percent true. My, my oldest son's 22 and sure enough, 17 to 21, it was like, whatever dad, I'm doing my thing. I'm in the army. I'm doing my thing. And now all of a sudden every couple of days, Hey dad, how's it going? How's the workouts going? <laughs> What's going on? I can't wait to come see you dad. And it's like, ah. Uh, what happened? This is awesome. So yeah, so it's it does come back. Um, yeah, my 17 year old daughter's looking at college on the East Coast. I'm like, you don't even like staying home alone. Like, how are you going to go to the East Coast? What, what the hell is this about? <laughs> I'll be down here if she needs anything. She can always yell at me. We'll make there you sure go. She stay down here. <laughs> and on that, I, I, Isabella, my stepdaughter, she'll be gone the day she graduates. She's uh, she's mm-hmm. gonna be a traveling nurse. She's going to go to college or Iowa Grant. She'll get her degree and she's gone. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah, my stepson, I don't even know he's alive. He's the easiest. Uh, ain't even, it's yeah. like, I, I, we just had to make sure his heart's beating every now and then. We never <laughs> played yeah, all I'm the good. sports, you know, basketball, track, uh, all boy. Caitlin, she's a, an, an artist. Uh, she, she has the creative side and us creative people genuinely it, tend to take longer to find our way. You know, I, I, I struggled, you know, I, I, I did five or 10 different things before I ever figured it out. So, uh, I, I hope she, uh, r- right now she's not a big fan of dad because, you know, the, I'm, I'm a little more of the disciplinarian. I see things that I don't like that I speak up on and, and it's harder when you're a, a dad that don't live in the household with them. I mean, there's not a dad out there that watches podcasts that won't won't agree because you know we feel like we lose some of our authority. You know, um, we say one thing, and sometimes you're not always on the same page with the mom, and and the mom says another, and then you know the dad is the outcast. And uh, you know, that's, amen. That that's, that's probably our biggest struggle as of late. It wasn't in the early years, but as, as she's gotten older, that's, that's been a little bit of our, our struggle. She's strong willed, um, likes to do things her way. And those, those, you know, does dads, you know, and all three of us are, uh, that's not always the right way, but sometimes you just got to go, well, I'll just be here when you fall flat on your face 
because you're gonna fall. <laughs> yeah, and, that's uh, for damn sure. Mm-hmm. Well, Cletus, let I'll, me let me let me tell you, you are not alone. You are <laughs> you are not alone. There's I, I can see two guys literally within a foot of me right now that are in the exact same boat as you are yeah. when it comes to that. So I mean, if, if you could take yeah, solace I'm, in anything, if there's a light at the end of any tunnel, that, that there's you ain't the only one. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely the stricter parent of I mean, my ex and I, and my daughter is like doing tries to do whatever she wants. And I'm like, nope, you're gonna be home at nine. You're gonna do this. You're gonna do that. And her mom is like, oh, you can do whatever. Oh, I'm like, stop. <laughs> and, it, here. and it's trying to trying to you know establish that okay there may be one set of rules over here but over yeah. here under this roof these are the rules and they've always been the same right. i mean like like for example uh just recently and again chloe sorry for throwing you under the bus girl uh <laughs> i it, it, since they were little we don't light candles in your bedroom underneath draperies. That's a really good yeah. rule. Common <laughs> friggin' sense, okay? <laughs> and and it got away there for a while, but now she's 17, and she's like a little hippie chick and, and what, like smell good things in her room, and she comes home, and I walk in, there's a friggin' candle, a flame right here, curtains right here. It's like I, I, I literally almost lost my shit i saw i apologize I, but and, and and i look at her and i says what are you doing she's like oh i'm older now i'm responsible enough it's okay i'm like you realize what you are saying right now the words coming out of your mouth as i'm looking at what's happening oh that house God. could burn down girl <laughs> oh, well yeah. i could do it at my dad's house i'm like i don't give two flying rats asses what you do at your dad's house and trying to get her to understand and respect I don't know how it is over there. I'm not a fly in the wall. I don't have cameras built in. All I know is what I have here and, and and what we do in trying to get her to, you know, adhere to that or at least somewhat respect it or hell, even fake it. it you know, at least when I'm around, <laughs> it's, it's, it's doesn't, it's not happening. It's, uh, yeah. it's very difficult. Hearing you, hearing y'all say that, you know, that I've always said that, you know, as hard as it is for us as dads to navigate that, imagine how hard it is on the kid. Oh yeah. To, to have to try and navigate it, you know? Uh, and I try to take that into consideration sometime, you know, which I don't always, again, don't always do a good job at it, but you know, they, uh, uh, adults like uh, we're, we're all, we're the selfish specimens in the world. We're, we're, we're completely selfish. We're all self-centered because we get married and we love one another and we go, oh, I love you, I love you. And then one day we go, I don't love you no more. Well, I don't love you anymore. Then we go our separate ways. But we have this, you know, beautiful creature that continues to love both of us, you know. And then the next thing you know, uh, their their lives are, you know, uh, torn apart to some degree, no matter how good you make it. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm from a broken home many different times. Uh, and it, 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 it scarred me for life. There's no question, no question. I, 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 I just, I can't, I don't even know. I don't even know what would, what it would be like to live. I never had one dinner in my entire life with my biological mother and father. Never, never know, never know what it was like to hang out at, uh, at the dinner table and say, Hey dad, you know, dad, Hey mom, mom, Hey mom and dad. Never. All I was, all my life was dysfunction completely all dysfunctional. And, I've paid a, a dear price for that. You know, I told my dad one time and I regretted it. I said, you know what? I'm going to be a great dad because you taught me how to be a great dad because you damn sure wasn't one. All I had to do is do right the opposite of what you've done right. and I'll be a great dad. And he, we later made amends, you know, before he passed away and, and, and life was good at that point. But it's a, uh, man, it's a struggle, dude. It's, it's just a struggle whether you, it's even more of a struggle when you live apart from, I think. Mm-hmm. I, I I can't attest to that one, uh, but I, I take your word. I, I believe that. Whew, getting yeah. deep and serious Man. on Dad Cash today. <laughs> wow. Let's okay. I, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna drive us right off the rails here. Quick hard sharp turn. I, I'm I'm curious about your radio career. Are you still doing it in any form or fashion? Well, let me tell you about that. Let me tell you about the radio career. So, 2005, I started. First, that was your uh, first time ever cracking the mic. Ever. I, you know, when I was in seventh grade, I Me had too. my own radio. Me too. Yeah. Really? All yeah. right. Well, you'll, 
this. I was in, when I was in seventh grade, I had my own little radio show. Uh, it's called One Eye Jack on W H I T E because I went to White Elementary and I was One Eye Jack because a guy by the name of Thomas summarized threw a pencil at me and it stuck in my eye <laughs> and I had to wear a patch for about a year. So, um, but once I got into the music business, I always kind of knew that that might be where I ended up. You know, I enjoy the microphone. I enjoy that side of it. And it, towards the end of my career, that first time, I could kind of feel the the demise. You know, I didn't want to be the guy singing on the back of the hay truck for 10 people. You know, once I had toured with the, the greats, the Brooks and Dunns and the Toby Keiths and all those guys, I didn't want to go back to single A ball. I'd been in the majors for a lot of years and uh, didn't want to go back. And so I took the job in Tampa. Best boss in the world, Mike Collada. I don't know if you guys know him. He was uh, my boss at CBS down there. And he was truly a manager of people. He he got me. Like, he would walk in the studio, and it was my show, the Cleveland's Tea Party, and he'd walk in and shake my hand on a Wednesday and it'd be a plane ticket or a, a gas voucher, and he'd say, man, go home. Go to Georgia. Go to Kentucky. Go see your kid. You, I can see it in your eyes. You're missing that little girl. Get the hell out of here. Man, ain't a guy in the world do that right now. Trust nope. me, I never found another one after he, after him when I left. But but if he had walked out of that building and quit, 200 employees would walk right behind him. He was the Pied Piper. We would all follow him because he believed in us. Well, I stayed there two years. That's when I turned down that contract. Went to make making making good money, more money than I deserved. Went to iHeart in Atlanta. Stayed nine months. I just thought I would be massive there because that's my hometown. I grew up, you know, uh, I knew all the baseball players, the football players. Chipper Jones, one of my best friends to this day, you know, and I just knew that they would all, you know, I sucked. It's horrible. Absolutely the worst nine months of my life. Uh, they fired me and, and paid me for another year. And I said, how the, how bad of a morning guy do you got to be to get fired? And they'll still pay you not to go somewhere <laughs> else. And then I went, I went back to Tampa. I was in Tampa for another few years. And then I made my way to iHeart here where, where my daughter lives in Huntington, West Virginia. And I was here up until Thanksgiving, right, a couple of days before Thanksgiving. We had been working on a new deal. My agent had been working on a new deal for about six months. And then... I had a little conference with uh, one of the one of the powers that be up in uh, in the corporate world. I'm sure you guys have them too. I used to. And, I'll explain that in a bit. And it got a little bit sideways on on the call. And uh, my daughter was actually in the car, and she said, "Dad, I, I'm going to get out of the car now. I don't like what's being said to you." And uh, so she got out of the car, and and I knew then that it was over. And I basically said, I'll never take another nickel of your money. Uh, you won't ever have to, you won't ever have to worry about me ever again. And it, it basically got into a point where it's like, cause I don't run, I'm not a board op, you know, I've never sat behind a board. I'm a co-pilot from, from the day one. And next thing you know, they start wanting me to run a board and, you know, do this. And I said, you got the wrong guy. You know, it's hard enough to be funny at six o'clock in the morning, much less, being responsible to run two stations, you know. Damn right. Uh, or, yes, sir. I, yeah. I've been there. I, and I, he, he said, well, you're the one of only 10,000 in the company. And I said, I'm probably only one of the 10,000. It's got you 10 years of number one ratings, too. Boom. But that being said, I'm, I'm out of here. So I walked. And uh, So that was just a few months ago, two months ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, All right, uh, fresh. I got my last check uh, the 4th, January 4th. So and what do you what do you what are your plans now? Uh, I mean, any idea what you're going to do moving forward? I think I do. Just file bankruptcy. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Come on, uh, man. I, 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 listen, you know, for God didn't give me a bunch of looks, but He did give me drive, and He did give me passion, and I'm a hustler. I, I just am. You know, I, I always have been. Because I, I, it never came easy for me. Some things come easy to people. I don't know of many things that ever come easy for me. I have, I have to work hard and, and craft my craft a little different or better than the other guy. And, you know, I, I've had my barber license. I was a barber by trade when I got out of college. I've had my barber license since 1984. 
Uh, I've kept them current since 1984. I also have a real estate license that I got two years ago. And it's like I tell my kids. Yeah, it's like I tell my kids, look, I don't care what you do. Just go do what you love. But have something. If the dream falls apart, becomes a nightmare, you got something to fall back on. You know, and I'll, I'm to I'm going to tour again. I started January 29th, uh, tour again, started in Bluefield, West Virginia. New video just came out this uh, Saturday, two days ago, already over 400,000 views on it in just a matter of a day and a half. And nice. uh, I'm going to, I'll be fine. I I'll, love I'll that. Face it hard. And now you, I, you, maybe you've already uh, considered such an endeavor, but I've got one if you haven't, and I've already got a name for it too: the Cletus T. Judcast. <laughs> I, let's 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 all three do it. We'll do it together. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I mean, I've only got negative three hours a day uh, already booked <laughs> up in 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 all the world, but let's I let's cram that some bitch in. I'm in. Yeah. yeah. I Can you imagine the, the with the radio power we have right here? And then Nick, wow! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Nick. I had always wanted to start a thing called the Dad Advocacy Program for for single dads, and uh, when I put that on TikTok, man, it it blew up because you you know there's just a bunch of us out there, and I tell you what, I wanted to do it more for me than I did giving advice to them. Hell, yeah. I need it more than they need it for me. I just, uh, I'm just real open and honest with my, my shortcomings, you know, uh, cause I, cause I do struggle with them, but that's, that's, I, I'm not worried about my future. I'm, uh, just, just because I feel like, you know, I got to the point, I don't know about y'all, but I got to the point where hell, I, I have a hard time taking direction. From, yeah. from somebody that, that I don't know, you know, now, you know, if, if it would have been Mike Collado or somebody, you know, uh, uh, my high school basketball coach called me up and says, look, you're being a prick. Da, 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 da. Then I sit back and go, yes, sir. I understand. And I, I'll, I'll try to do better, but, but don't come after me when you, when I've never shook your hand and you, yeah, I, I, I don't yeah. do Yeah, it. I get it. I get it. I I had a similar situation. I had a, I sold furniture and appliances for over 20 years and we started this podcast and it started taking off. And when COVID hit the furniture and appliance industry went to hell, like you couldn't yeah. get, you can't get anything. And uh, so it was a decision of, do I want to stay and make minimum wage and be told what to do by people I don't like, or do I want to jump in and do this full time and make it work? And so far it's working. So. <laughs> You know, you won't ever regret it. I've always said, if, if the ship's going to sink, I'm going to sink it. Yeah. I'm going to be the captain of my ship, me and the good Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can deal with that. But I'd be damned if I can deal with somebody I ain't never met before sinking my ship and yeah. crushing it. No, I, I'm out. And I'm uh, getting my real estate license, so i got something else in common with you. So. Okay. Love that. You know, I'm remodeling an old, I've remodeled, I think, 18 houses now. Oh, working wow. On and and that's why I just try to instill in my kids, you know, man, I, I got a plan. I don't know right. always what it is, but if I had to go back to cutting hair at a barbershop, I can feed myself, you know, if I can sell some houses, but I, but I, but I'll make it, I'll, I'll make it. It's just, it's just my nature. I, I hope, I, I hope I ain't talking to y'all in a year from now and, you know, uh, you know, living in a cardboard box, but I, I feel like, you know, I got a great family. I got a great wife. I got a, I got a sugar mama. So yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> That's not a bad thing to have, man. No, so no, I no, it's not. right before uh, the pandemic. So January of 2020, my, my story, you know, I've been working terrestrial radio, corporate, different companies, you know, over the last 20 years, give or take. And I was actually let go. I was straight fired from the place that shall not be named or mentioned. Um, right. But I, uh, during the last couple of years of the, my employment there, I had started my own radio station, uh, you know, streaming with broadband the way it is these days, um, you know, a Spotify, a Pandora type deal and called Pirate Radio. I think you totally dig it. P-Y-R-A-T-E. It's basically if you're sipping on a margarita in the Caribbean and you're in a tiki bar and there's music playing in the background, that is what Pirate Radio is. Lots of Buffett, lots of reggae, lots of stuff like that. Yeah. Sailing music. Oh. But that's... They let me go, and I spent 30 minutes panicking because I'm like, this is what I do. I'm a radio guy. God dang it. Right. I, I need to go through that whole process again of sending out blah, blah, blah. And then I was sitting 
in the same chair I'm sitting right now, behind the same desk, and I says, no, I have my own radio station, and now I don't have a boss to tell me if I'm doing it wrong or right when I know I'm doing it right. And I, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I am now running that station. I can do what I want. Uh, if I'm wrong, then, you know, like you said, I it's my own doing. I, I'm going down with the ship. And yeah. And then, you know, I've got other jobs and then we've got, we started this podcast a few months later uh, during the pandemic, which has taken off. And hopefully this is all we'll have to do in the future, but it's crazy how a, a, a moment of, you know, being scared and, and unsure of the future and anger at the employers and the company for unreasonably, in my opinion, letting me go for all the things you know, story, there's always a story and we don't even get into that. But again, it was, it was the catapult. It was the fire that lit under my ass that I needed. And, and here we are and I have a Tesla and great kids. <laughs> so, you know, I have been, I've said it before. I've been loaded with money and suicidal and I've been broke and happier in 400 hails. Yeah. You know, I, I've never, uh, I've, I've got to do more than, than, than I ever dreamed I would get to do, you know, 1990 Ponte Vedra beach, Florida. I was suicidal, uh, for about six hours driving my car back and forth the bridge in Ponte Vedra, trying to get the nerve up to, to take my own life as I had pretty much became a drug addict, still 17 years recovering at this point, 17 years clean. Um, and by the grace of God, I didn't, I wasn't able to do it, you know, probably cause I didn't want to, you know, if you want to kill yourself, you can. Uh, but I, you know, I, I, I tried, I contemplated it. Didn't a friend of mine flew me home, I left the car down there in old Honda prelude and was sitting in the, uh, sitting in some shag carpet about six inches deep one night watching the CMA awards when Vince Gill in 1991 won a, won song of the year for a, a song called when I call your name. And I turned around and my mom was crying and I said, mom, why are you crying for? And she said, I just give anything in the world to meet Vince Gill. I just think he's the sweetest and best singer I've ever heard. And I said, well, hell, if you want to meet Vince Gill, I can hook that up. And she said, well, Barry, you, that's my real name, Barry. She said, you, you've never sang a note in your life. You know, you don't know anything about Nashville. And I said, you want to meet Vince Gill? And she said, yeah. And I said, then I'll figure it out. And that's when the journey to where I'm sitting here talking to y'all began, you know, in, in, a, in a little double wide trailer. And I went down, did an amateur night a few weeks later, a little cub called the Buckboard Country Music Showcase. I won $50 for doing a, an old country rap song. Six months later, my mother bought me a Toyota pickup truck with no radio, no heat, no sheet metal in the doors. And I moved to Nashville with about $400 in my pocket. And I would take bass at the YMCA. In the mornings, I'd go to Music Row and, and try to meet people, and I'd do amateur nights at night. If I won an amateur night, I'd get a room, and if I didn't, it was I'd slept in the front of my truck over in a Ruby Tuesday's parking lot out by the airport. And a, a long story short is uh, the ice storm, which y'all have them all the time out there, I'm sure, but 1994, an ice storm came through Tennessee, and I, I didn't have heat in that truck, and I was scraping my windshield going down the interstate, and I got frostbite on my left hand, and I almost lost three of my fingers on my left hand. And on a Sunday night, I called my mother, Collect, back when you didn't have cell phones then, <clears throat> and I said, Mom, I gave it all I got. I said, I'm hungry. I ain't got no clean clothes. Uh, come and get me. And she said, are you sure? That's just not your nature. And I said, Mom, I can't do this no more. I tried, but I'm just not making any progress. And I, I'm broke, and I just want to come home. And that very night, as I was on the phone with her on a little transistor radio sitting on a table, I heard a song called Indian Outlaw by Tim McGraw, and I started humming Indian in-laws under my breath. And uh, while I was on the phone with her, I, I had the idea I'm an Indian in-law. Came to visit me and my squad. I've been here for a month, y'all. I'm about to lose my mind. And I said, Mom, I got to call you back. And she said, well, am I coming to get you? And I said, I'll call you back. And I hung up. I called a buddy of mine. We wrote the rest of it over the phone. I borrowed $250 about a month later, recorded it. And about two months later, it was on 199 radio stations. And the rest was history. Now, here's where God came into play. Three years after that, I'd already had two years after that, I already had four or five songs out and selling records, you know, and I was asked to play in a golf tournament at the Hermitage Golf Course in, in Nashville. And I told, I said, I don't want to play. I'm tired. 
they said, they need one more celebrity. Can you play? Can you play? So I said, okay, I'll play. I pull up to the Hermitage Golf Course, 1996 or seven. And, you know, they have the big tote boards up on the wall, what hole you start on, the group you're playing in. I'm sure right. y'all played in 100 of them. And I'm on 16A is my starting hole. And it's me, another guy, another guy, another guy, and Vince Gill. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> they had messed up and put me – two celebrities in that group, not nobody asked, nobody requested. And I was paired with Vince Gill and I rode in the cart with the reason I was there to begin with. I cry every time I tell this story. And about on number 14 or 15, I had told Vince that story about mom. And I said, would you do a video with me? Uh, and let my mom come up and say hi. And he said, book it. And a couple of weeks later, my, uh, John, we were shooting the video. Wives do it all the time. You can see it on the internet. My mother sent me to Nashville in 1992 and a Toyota pickup truck. And I brought her to Nashville in a stretch limo as long as this porch out here. And she pulled up with her two cousins, Myrna and Bobby. And on a Monday afternoon, there was a knock on the door and all the directors and video producers, John Lloyd Miller and everybody knew what was going on. And they said, Moselle, won't you grab that door? And my mom, why do I need to get the door? And they said, just, just grab the door for us. And so everybody quit what they were doing. It was the most silent thing you'd ever heard. And I'll never forget watching my mother's feet walk across that floor. And she, <clears throat> and she opened the door and there he stood. And I said, I told you, Aww. I told you I could pull that off. And, uh, you know, that was probably the biggest highlight other than having my kids, you know, of my entire career, you know, was, uh, was the struggle, you know, and I man, I always think had I quit or if I'd have went home or that's why I just don't have the ability to quit. I'm always afraid of what I'll miss. And, uh, I was, I was proud to be able to, to give my mom that and, and Vince, you know, became a dear friend of mine to this day. We talked frequently on the phone when my mother died, Vince, uh, Vince was one of the first to call and, uh, it, he, he's a he's a good man, and I would I'm forever indebted for him uh, for making helping me make my mom's dream come true for sure. Cletus T. Judd, well, that, that story it, it strikes at the heart of me because I I, I, I hate I don't want to bring this up, but it, it's relevant. Um, sure, and and, and, and <laughs> I don't want emotion. It's okay, I'm okay, but I lost my mother about seven days ago, and. It's so, so super fresh and hearing that story that you could provide that to your mother. I mean, and it's healing for me in the, in what I'm going through right now. So, so thank you, man. That's amazing. I did not know that. And, uh, it not, it's not something I'm, you know, blast. Well, actually I did blast it over the internet, but you know, man, you know, mom was such a, such a, a, um, everything I see. You know, and we can get real deep here. And I know y'all don't, y'all probably don't have very long, but as a kid, I had premeditated my suicide, my demise. It's when my mother died, I died because I knew that I would not be able to live without her. Right. She was really the only mainstay that I had, you know. <clears throat> and of course, when God gave me Caitlin, of course, that 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 flew out the window. You know, that's never been a an emotion since, nor will it ever be. But uh, most of the things that I did in my life, I tried to do for my mom. You know, I was able to buy my mother a, a, a funny story here. I was able to buy my mom a, a small house in a little gated 65 and over community when I was touring with Brooks and Dunn. And uh, I brought her over to the house and we were riding through the neighborhoods, you know, and she was looking at these houses. She's like, oh, my God, that's beautiful. Oh, my God, I wonder who lives there. And then we pulled up at this other one and she said, God, look at that front porch. And I'll never forget, I said, how would you like to sit on that front porch? She said, we can't go in somebody's house. I said, no, but you can damn sure go in yours because that that's your house. Uh, and uh, yep. she bawled like a baby, and we got out, and we walked in the house. And I had no furniture in there at the time, you know, and I had her some flowers on the bar. And 
And we walked through, and you know, I'll never forget as long as I live. And I'm sure you have poignant moments like this with your moms. And she was looking at the high ceilings and looking at the, you know, the bathroom with the tile backsplash because we never had no money, you know. And and so we sat down at the bar, and she said, "I said, well, what do you think?" And she said, "Well, she said I love it." She said, "But I don't want to hurt your feelings." Mm. And I said, "You don't hurt my feelings." She said, "You know." I love the house, but she said, I just think I love my little apartment better. And she said, but I sure would like to keep the flowers. And uh, I said, all, all good. All good. You think I give a damn? I'll take you right back to that apartment. Right. But it's the fact that I was able to offer it to yeah. her. I didn't yeah. care. Every night. It, it didn't hurt my feelings one bit. I sold it, probably lost 20 grand at the time. But it was just the mere fact of of being able to say, hey, I, I worked hard, I saved a little bit, and I'd like to share it with you if 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 you'd like. Now she liked the cash. She, <laughs> she liked the cash better yeah. uh, than the sticks and the bricks. But uh yeah, it was uh that was a that was a poignant moment I got to share with mom too. Yeah, it's oh it's it's emotional, man. I get it. Um <clears throat> I'm going to lighten things up just a tad. We are <laughs> yeah, getting near the end yeah. of our time. So I have, well, Nick had, Nick, you got a fast five for us. I do. Okay. So this is a little segment we like to do, and I don't even need to explain what the hell a segment is. The Cletus T. Judd. So here That's we go. Fast five, five questions, quick answers. Let's go. Nick, have at it. All right. Favorite vacation spot to take your family. <laughs> Panama City, Florida. Nice. Real good uh, fish tacos. Good? Man, yeah. fish tacos. <laughs> Oof. Dude, yeah. Mm. <laughs> go go to a meal to cook for your daughter. Oh, God. Uh, hamburger patties with cheese on top. Nice. Minus the bun? Yeah, uh, huh? Minus the bun? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> your proudest dad moment. Oh, wow. Probably, probably escorting Caitlin down the, the red carpet at the award show four or five years ago. Uh, and, and the reason that I say that is because I, I, I told her, I said, you know, in, in order for, for, for me to have walked this red carpet, I had to cl- climb a lot of hills. And, and I hope that, you know, you walk in this red carpet someday, you know, when you get older, if you want to be, be, you know, be, uh, be a star or whatever, you're too going to have to climb a lot of hills before you can walk the red carpet. And, uh, then we took off and walked down there and, and, and that was probably a pretty proud moment for me with her. That's awesome. The funniest dad fail. Hell, how many, how many, how much time? Uh, pro, uh, man, I'd, I'd like to say something funny, but the biggest dad fail, I think, was the first seven years of Caitlin's life, spending it in, in Tampa and in St. Pete, thinking that making the money was the right thing to do for her, but because I would always say, well, she'll never remember this anyway she won't remember this and I can set her up. The problem is hell. I remember it. Yep. That's the problem. She don't, mm-hmm. I do. So yeah, that's my biggest dad fail is I, I, I thought that seven years of monetary gain would make for a better life for her. It didn't help a damn bit. Now dad failed one right there. Okay. Lighten it you up. Big. Bill- there. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. Lighten it up a little bit. If you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be? Wow. God, that's a hard one, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, a billboard with anything on it. Probably me when I was 18 because I was hot then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had are, are, hair. You, are you clothed? Yeah, I, had, I had hair and, uh, and, um, and there'd probably be the picture of me when I went to my senior prom because I put mascara on my mustache 
because it was blonde. So I wanted it to be like Burt Reynolds. The problem is I do the other side. So I only did the dark side here and I, I forgot to do the other side. So my senior prom picture, I had a, a white mustache and a black mustache. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to right see that. There. Oh, no. Awesome. I'll, I'll and that is Fast Five. All right, I like to always add a couple of questions here uh, to round out the uh, the show's episode. So, okay, Cletus T. Judd, you can offer fatherly advice for a brand new father to anyone watching this episode or listening to this episode. Uh, what is the best, most prolific piece of advice you could give to a new father? You can't buy them back little when they're all grown up. Think about it. Yeah, I got it. I don't need to think. Yep. Yeah. I, I trust me. I, I've, uh, I did a, a show for a ducks unlimited banquet one year and, and I asked guys, I said, raise your hand. If you're not too shy or too personal, raise your hand. If you got six figures of money in the bank and hell 40 or 50 of them raised. And I said, raise your hand. If you got seven figures of money in the, in the bank, and a couple raised their hand. I said, I'll challenge you to write a check for all of it to buy back the one thing you wish you never had missed. Unattainable. Once it's gone, that's why I said earlier, you know, you can't buy back a memory. Try to be there. You can't be there for all of it, but damn, don't let the monetary issue stand in the way because you'll you'll hate yourself when they get older. Trust me. There you, have you might it. know. Yeah. You can play a show, a single show with any artist you've never previously played with, living or dead, who's it going to be? Wow, boy, that is a good one. Probably, probably Elvis. Probably Elvis. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, oh, Elvis. <laughs> Show I ever went to in my entire life, 1976, the Omni in Atlanta. I was at an Elvis concert. Uh, sitting in the very top row of the Omni, and you could barely see him down there. I went with a friend of mine, Jeff Black. And uh, I'm going to tell you, man, in Elvis' prime, whew, he was a bad boy. What were you, 11 years you, old in 76? Uh, I was I was six, I was six or seven. Yeah, I was 12. 12, yeah. Wasn't I? Four, <laughs> yeah. Four. Yeah, I was 12 years old, 76. Wow, man, that's, so, a, yeah. that's something that not many people can say. And it's yeah, getting I, that number is getting lower and lower as time goes on. Oh, I know. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm, I'm almost 100 percent positive. 1976. Jeff Black and his mom Betty took us down there, and I can I, I just remember a white outfit. I was so far away from him, you know, I couldn't couldn't see him. But uh, you know, that was a uh, man. I, I've I, I know people that knew Elvis. And man, the stories! Oh my God, Joe Muscato, uh played with it was Elvis. I think he was his keyboard player at one time. Dude, the funniest stories you've ever heard in history from Elvis. They said they'd go watch football with him on a Sunday, and they'd all be all the bands, you know, the Memphis Mafia. They'd all be over there, and and if anybody bet against the team that Elvis didn't like, uh, Elvis liked. Joe said he'd fire him on the spot. Tell him to get the hell out of his house. <laughs> then back in Graceland, and they would all get in the car. And Joe said before they get to the end of the driveway, he'd call and go, "Now look here, guys. I don't like watching this stuff by myself. Is there any way you could turn around and come back? I, I got a little ahead of myself. You're not fired, but and they'd all turn around and go back and hang out with him. But uh, I've heard some great Elvis stories along the way for sure. But he, he, he. I think he was he was a great dad. I think he would have been. Um, with Lisa Marie, and I know he was a great son to his mom. I've I've heard that uh, he was a phenomenal son to his mother. There you go. Cletus would play a show with Elvis, and I can't say I'd argue that, and I'd pay top dollar to see that performance, man. Uh, yeah. Woo wait. Oh man. All right. So I got I got one more question. And yeah. uh this is one I ask uh all my guests, even spanning back to radio days. And if you've spied any of our episodes and you've already know what question I'm going to ask and and you know the spoiler, then, well, then, you know, shame on me. But um, it, there was one particular artist who answered this question so amazingly perfect. 
that Uh-oh. every answer that I've ever heard since has yet to even come close. So now it is your turn, Cletus. Oh, you can uh-huh. leave the house. When you leave the house in the morning, what is one thing you cannot leave without? And when I give you the answer of what dude said, you're going to go, wish I would have thought of that. Or will uh, we? That's a trick question. It's not. It's you. not really. It's not really. Uh, God, it's going to suck because I know it's probably my phone. Yep. Okay. There you go. And that's typically what most <laughs> everyone will say. And it's for not- years and years and years, uh, you know, the keys, their, their, their laptop, you know, whatever, that was the general answer. And then one beautiful afternoon, a few years back, I'm on the phone with George Thorogood and I ask oh, him yeah. that question. You know what he is? His answer is without I'll skipping a beat, it. without skipping a beat, the man says, what's one thing I can't leave home without? Well, kissing my wife, of course. Wow. Yeah. Dang it, I'm getting set up. <laughs> I apologize. I wasn't trying to set you up, but I'm still searching for an answer that will top that. I don't yeah. think there is, man. I don't, I don't I don't think anybody can top that one. I think no, George no, Thorogood is no. the man. So now I feel like a guilty moron. Thanks. <laughs> Tom Arnold said said gummy bears or something along those lines. So you know we're good. So, something weird, yeah. <laughs> we we should all be that way, you know. I have a I have a great wife. I've had several of them along the way, you know. Friends with most of them so far. They they all got uh, they all left for more than they came with. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> all <laughs> right. Uh, he okay, Nick. I know you had and you told me this yesterday when I saw yeah. you. You said you had one question, and I want you to ask it while we're still recording, so it's yeah. on record. And and, right. and let me just forewarn you, Cletus. Nick does this every freaking episode, so I apologize <laughs> up front. Nick, have at it. So, it so I like I like to name drop Joe Rogan. Um, but <laughs> so I I heard that you uh you know Larry the Cable Guy possibly. I do. Is yeah. there any way you can possibly set up a dad cast with him and us? He's going to be about 45 minutes away from where we live on February 11th doing a show at a casino. Or at least plant a seed, Nick. You don't have to go like, hey, we want to hang out and, and spend the night with you. <laughs> you don't I don't want to spend the night. I, I might want to cuddle, but I don't want to spend the night. <laughs> Man, you know, a really good friend of mine, uh, I used to have Dan's number in my phone. I don't think I have it anymore, but one of my good friends that I'm going to do some shows with this year. Reno Collier is best friends with Dan and Reno. And I talk two or three times a week. Let me see if I can't maybe go that route and, okay. and throw it and see if he can, uh, see if he can pass it along. And, uh, where's Larry playing at there? Is it a, it's, uh, it's called seven feathers casino. It's, up, it. it's, it's up, it's up by Roseburg. So it's about 45 minutes North of us. Are y'all in Oregon? Yes. Yeah. I did the, the one of the first times I've, I've only been to Oregon once, but I Klamath Falls. Yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's about an hour and a half away. Yeah. From where I was Falls when OJ was on when the verdict came in. <laughs> 94. I, I oh, remember Falls, but uh, I, I'll see what I can do. I'll put a bug in Reno's ear and see what I can do. Okay. Well, and also contact info so you can. Yell at me, call me, text me, or whatever. Let me see what I can do. Nick, are you okay. also you're seriously adding an also to that well, question? No, I, have an, I have I have an idea. Cletus <laughs> okay, said he's right. on tour, and we are now doing our own concert. So we so part of Dadcast, we also manage bands. Um, yeah. We manage Marty Ray Project. We manage a couple other bands, but we also do very awesome, intimate, sixty cap venue VIP shows in Southern Oregon that yeah. we do a really nice state of the art live stream. I, we would love to have you come out. So who do we, who do we talk to? My wife would, would love to would love to come out there. We'll put I, you up. We have a, a deal with some cabins on the river. We'll put you up in. We'll, we'll take care of you. Yeah, it's 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 no Klamath Falls, man. It's way better. <laughs> trust me. Yeah. It's <laughs> man, you know what I remember about Klamath Falls was for some reason it, it's maybe it was I was so far north or whatever, but it seemed like I could have just if I could have jumped high enough, I could have touched the clouds. We we're yeah. on a golf. All just like travel for <laughs> ever out there, but man, I would love to come back out there and 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 stay and do you know maybe work my way out there, work my way back, you know, do three or four while I'm out there and and have a, a man to come out with me and yeah, man, that would be awesome. Let's let's uh, 
Well, I'll choose you guys get yeah. you can chit chat after uh, after the show yeah. and email and whatnot. But please, uh, seed planted, amazing. Uh, Cletus T. Judd, thank you so That's much awesome. for taking yeah, the time out of your day. And to be, I'm gonna lie to you, man. I, I'm I, I don't pull any punches ever. This has been. Uh, we've had a few deep episodes here and there on Dad Cash. Usually they're lighthearted and fun. This one we got a little bit serious, but that's a good thing. And I can honestly say from the bottom of my heart, sharing and hearing those experiences with you, this has been one of the more enlightening and more deeper personal episodes for me um, that we've ever done here on DadCast. And I'm just so happy you came on to do it. Well, let me tell you yeah. something. Closing that 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 means means the world to to me you know i i always said you know the first time around the ch the fans kind of changed my life this time around i hope i can help change theirs you know life is uh life is short you know i know i got a lot less left than i than i had you know a long time ago none of all of us do uh but but i i appreciate uh, i appreciate you saying that 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 means as much uh, that's why i say when people come out to shows you know i just want you to feel something I'm not just a stand-up comic. I don't have a, a pocket full of one-liners or whatever. I just try to be be one of the dads. You know, I just try to be one of them is what I like to say. i uh, done some great things, and I hope that my story will touch others and, and make, them, uh, make them go out and do something with their life because if some idiot like me can make it, by God, anybody can. <laughs> and uh, thank you. I like to do this again sometime. Just let me know, and we'll uh, hopefully I'll get to see you guys soon. Absolutely, yeah. you know I, I'm going to ask you to commit right up front every year, and by every year I mean one year. So far, we do a Father's Day Dad Cast special. Um, we play. We usually record it a week or two prior to Father's Day, so that's yeah. coming up in a few months. Uh, we'd love to have you on and we're going to have like a Brady bunch scenario where there's like 75 boxes on the screen and we're all just bantering back and forth. Should be fun. We'd love to have you on. I'm in just book it. Plan yeah. on it. When we jump out there, I'll, I'll shoot y'all an email, give y'all my, my contact stuff, cell number okay. and all that. We'll get together soon. Perfect. Sounds okay, good. Awesome. To everyone listening, to everyone watching, thank you much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you're watching on YouTube, please like it up, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff, and we will see you next week. Thank you again, Cletus T. Judd. Nick. Thanks, man. See you guys. Yeah. See you. Thank you.